Uh, so, do we want to do some kind of um, like time limit thing or? Um, well, yeah, I guess we can give it ten minutes now since it's. I mean, I I feel like I need to explore with this. So I'm yeah, yeah. Give it ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what topic? Oh, topics. Well, do, I guess do we need topics? Just at the cloud. Just cloud, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sure. Want to explore the actual game, and then we will add the extra. Yeah, just yeah I'm down. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Cool. Awesome. Um, so basically, so we'll just now? do this and see what happens at the, yeah, exactly. for now for the first session. Be because I, I I did the white mask now. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 it's it's a challenge because now I feel the need to put some lines in. But I don't want to put. I shouldn't put lines, right? I well, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I guess we just have to recognize that um, if we introduce like more more elements, it it's uh, it, of course it gives you probably more space to explore and more possibilities. You know, more things can go wrong. Therefore, more things can go great. Right. Happy right. accidents. But uh, then you need to keep in mind that if you're going to show this to like a student or something. But also, and even just for yourself, that the more complicated you make it, the the more bogged down you could potentially get if you start, mm. I don't know, um, overthinking some part of it. Yeah. So there's you just have to consider those things. Yeah, but uh, it's good, I think, to do uh, like a game on each part of the basic drawing lessons because. Uh, that helps with the teaching of, of this uh, like that that like right now if, if this if we have a we can, if someone can like find a good uh, zo uh, comfort zone in this value game and then he can find a good comfort zone in the perspective game mm -hmm. then you have like perspective and values what do you still got you got anatomy and like if you can do a, a game that's all about creativity about each aspect of drawing, technical aspect of drawing, you can make drawing really fun as a teacher, right? Yeah, yeah, you can, exactly. Every every aspect should, if you can, make it a game, uh, everything a game, then yeah. no, nothing will be boring. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with, I completely agree with that. So, so I think the, the thing about complexity, at least for who you're just exploring by yourself, is that uh, you can you can use one technique maybe you know you maybe you can start with just one thing that's say hard edge trans uh, semi opaque and if if you just using that with some r random doodles you're able to discover find things inside for you to work on to 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 make out of then keep doing just that technique by itself but if you if you find that you you do, you're doing it for a while and then nothing interesting seems to be happening for you, then introduce something else, and to try to kind of shake things up. Yeah. So that you Makes be, sense. yeah you be the judge on whether something is current, kind of getting you into a nice flow or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Sure. What we could do as well after we finish the, the thing and all in white, we could like uh, uh, remove the black and then invert it. Oh yeah. You, can see it. you want to remove the black and then invert it, or you don't want to invert it together? Oh yeah, I know because I put uh, the white on one layer. And black. Ah, you put it on a different layer. Okay, then uh, yeah. I like to Should see. We do it on the same layer. I can put. Well, it on the same we can we can see the difference. I mean, I did it all in the same layer, but I'm interested to see what happens to to your piece, to your thing, mm -hmm. when you make it on the same on, on separate layers. All right. Yeah, because I I just put my the brush on fifty percent opacity. Ah, uh, I see. And on different layer. Um, yeah. I see. I kind of I like to have it. Um, I like to just have one tool and then just switch the colors. <laughs> that's that's oh. just a habit of mine. Seems a bit yeah, that's easy. a painting habit, I bet. Well, I don't know. It's because that's what 
You know what it is? It's just that the shortcut key is easier to reach to switch oh. colors than to switch tools <laughs> or switch la layer. Also, in, also, I don't have Photoshop anymore, so I, I'm, my habits are changing just based on what tool I'm currently using. And now it's this, uh, you know, art rage. So. Is, there, uh, is the software you're using much different uh, from Photoshop in terms of shortcuts? Well, no, not, yeah, actually probably quite, quite a bit different. But mostly, it's mostly different because it has a very different painting and color engine than Photoshop. I see. Yeah, it's, you know, Photoshop is kind of primarily created to manipulate photos and yeah. photorealistic images and stuff. This, it wasn't really made to paint, you know, but, you know, people are very smart and they can do things, do tricks and stuff to make it yeah. uh, be able to give pretty good painting results. But it's a little bit going the you have to do things in a roundabout way because it's not emulating paint or anything it's, it's just doing pixels um and art rage is made from the ground up to emulate painting so it has certain uh, properties that are not found in photoshop so i i like some of those properties a lot Yeah, the only reason I feel like Photoshop is being used by most people who like uh, to do concept art and digital painting is because uh, the oldest one around, so it's adapted to the needs of people who. Yeah, I guess, you know. I guess so. He also seems just he also seems very, very fast and very, relatively speaking, very stable. Like I, when I when I kind of came off of Photoshop, I went around and looked for a bunch of different alternatives. And every one of them was either more crashy or more slow, or both. <laughs> and yeah. although a lot of them had their own thing that Photoshop didn't have, a lot of them have like good, nice symmetry, for example, or a more interesting brush engine or things like that, or better 3D functionality, all kinds of different or animation. A lot of them had their own nice, interesting features. Um, but uh, in terms of speed and stability, nothing seemed to have rivaled Photoshop in my, in my search. Mm. But I did... I bet. Yeah? yeah. Go, go no, for it. I was saying I bet because it's uh, been around the updating for so many years and improving on its versions. It should be the more stable one, you know? Yeah. Anyway. They had a long time to get it right. Yeah. Full city. Yeah, let me see what you're up to. Uh -huh. oh, I'm just doing this weird face and I'm stuck in it uh, <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. Wow, look at the face you did. Wow. Nice. Some sunglasses? Those, <laughs> those are good values. Like, yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, I like, I think yours is more interesting. I mean, you, you, you've got a nose. I mean, this, mine is just some boring elf guy. I think I'll change it up. Yeah, but my if you turn upside down. nose, the eyes, where's everything? I mean, yours, you can see the nose, you can see that you can feel like it's popping out of the screen almost, right? Yeah, I think we're we're kind of doing uh doing this in a slightly different mindset. Like you're you're using the overlapping values to give you ideas for the design, right? For the shape. Yeah. That's so so you came up with a cool like shape. It's it's got more character. You know, if you saw this your character on the street, you would probably, you know, do a double take. If you saw my guy on the street, you you might not really notice it's just some other guy. Because I, I guess I was more noticing the, the value and the structure of the form of it. So we focused on different kinds of things in, in the same initial, um, initial process. That's a good thing to train, really. Because sometimes on some tasks you're doing, you want to not care about the, the the form or the realism. You want to make sure that, especially in the very beginning, like you're brainstorming, for example, you're concepting. Yeah, you want you want to not be stuck by you know does this look like a realistic nose or something. You want to know is this shape interesting? You know is this an interesting nose? That's much more 
important than to make it look realistic. And then later, once you've got the cool design, some nice shapes, then you go like, okay, now how can I make this? How can I sell this to other people? Because I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Hmm? yeah, it makes sense. And, uh, and you know, especially when you want to have the style and all that, so all that stuff will, will help you create your own personal style that's unique to you. So if you focus on, on that aspect of it throughout the games, yeah, it's there's also there's always that aspect of kind of every time you're doing this, if you if you're paying attention, you start to notice, you know, your your tendencies. What kind of things do you gravitate towards? What yeah. kind of habit do you seem to to have? Or you know, what, what are your go-to moves? Exactly, yeah. And then you if you notice, then you can decide. You know, do I want to do that? Do I want to keep exactly. doing that or not? But if you don't know, then you can't help it. You just you can only do what it is. Well, still, uh, yeah, that's the difference between uh, very different types of people who master things. Some people master it in a very subconscious way, where it comes out without even them knowing what they're doing. And uh, some people master it in a very you know, technical way, the way you're saying, where they find it and then they filter out, right? Usually, like the one that is usually more uh, romanticized in movies, uh, is the one that can do things spontaneously. But the one that's more practical is the one that can. That gets. Oh, well, that's the one that gets jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we kind of romanticize in movies, but in 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 like real life, people still tend to value the uh, the consistent. Yeah, people people like consistency. They want results. They want people like quote unquote result oriented. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of a little bit it's anti it's antecedental or and what do you what do you call it? They're opposing principles, right? Most of the time, yeah. if you want to to really be creative and get interesting results all the time, then you can't be predictable. Mm -hmm. So I guess really yeah. people really want to find that guy, the one out of a million who is both unpredictable and consistent <laughs> consistently yeah it's always about the missing link finding the silver lining yeah between the two great things yeah I, so i think personally i think that that result comes from um a little bit of both you can i think it can't come from complete accident there there are those people who are who like hits their head um well, I don't know, like traveling, and then suddenly they can draw perfect anatomy. <laughs> There's that. Oh, yeah. But but uh, we're not counting on that, right? You can't count on one day. What if I hit my head? <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So so I think you can you can get there. You can get the same state by really by paying attention. And I mean, number one is you gotta have fun. That's always number one. Like you can't really replace that because if you don't have fun, then you not have the right approach to things, I think. So oh, yeah. you gotta have fun, then you gotta notice, you gotta pay attention to yourself and notice what what are you doing and are you doing it in a way that's good or not. And then you constantly pay attention and notice and adjust until until I, I, you reach a point where you're, you're so, you know, you're such an expert at what you do and it's so you that uh, it seems like magic to other people and and then you don't have to think about it consciously anymore because you've been you you're, you know it really well now yeah. but but you got there by paying attention not by accidentally fumbling about and or by getting lucky or something yeah exactly yeah no, or, or or basically you got there by by doing the, the two things both of those things by actually paying attention and also letting it come out of you naturally yeah I mean, yeah, the, the balance between it's a dance, <laughs> yeah, that dance. A, a juggling act. Yeah. It's kind of like when they say someone masters a tool or anything so so good that you feel like it's it's a part of them. It's not a, a separate uh, entity of them. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
someone mm. like like when they used to talk about uh, sword masters or or even musicians. What is this? Yeah, musicians. Oh yeah, like I mean, uh, well, when you hear BB uh, King talking about his guitar, you see or whatever. Uh, you can feel like uh, he he. he uh, it's it's an extension of his soul, you know, uh, the guitar. Yeah, like I I I think I can I can see that. So yeah, it's, so it's it's like so when he uses it, it's just it's he is expressing himself at a hundred percent when he's using the guitar because he used it so much that he can express himself. So mm. naturally, mm. and the same thing with like a swordsman who who knows how to a samurai or a, you know a knight who knows how to use his tools so well that he does it uh, like he's speaking, like he's talking. Mm -hmm. He does it with his own accent. Yeah, I I have a slightly different way of looking at it. Personally, I mean the is I think we're talking about really similar things. Yeah, and it's all. It's usually when people, two people are talking about something that's so on a philosophical or conceptual level, it's always going to be different. I feel on the deepest level of psychology, like we will always view things slightly differently. Yeah, I yeah, because we have different experiences and everything. Yeah, like uh, between all humans. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, you were saying. Yeah, so I I just think it's uh, instead of saying that if somebody is kind of when they're really uh, mastering what they do that they're fully like being themselves i i see it as kind of they're they're being nobody oh yeah like they're not there it's it's like if when for example when mozart is writing music or something i i get the picture that he feels like he's he's not him writing the music there he's like there is music and I will just, I'll just be the channel for this music. Yeah, that, yeah. It's, it, they talk about it in, in the movie in, in Amadeus. You know Amadeus, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. It's quite interesting. <laughs> I don't know how realistic it is, but it's very entertaining. No, it, it's, it's, oh no, it's not realistic. Uh, yeah? It's not very realistic. Because I don't know anything about Mozart aside from that movie, really. I mean, that's, <laughs> and this music. I mean, uh, uh, he did die young, and he did have some rivalry with Salieri, but uh, and uh, he died from alcohol poisoning. And people accused Salieri of poisoning him. Uh huh. Um, but it wasn't like in the movie. No, it wasn't that uh, beautiful as an event. It wasn't so dramatic. Was huh? very uh, rude human being. Like a, they made, made him, uh, so that part is 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 been reported historically. Like he's kind of a a scoundrel <laughs> of sorts. Yeah, he he was. Well, I mean, uh, and and not only that, he like he used to write uh, the music. Some of the music uh, he wrote, uh, even though it sounds beautiful and it's all like uh, opera or whatever. They have like a choir singing sometimes like that. Yeah. But he wrote stuff about, like, he wrote a song that's completely made out of profanity. Profanity, I guess. <laughs> He's really? describing about how someone should lick his ass, basically. I'm not gonna go into details. <laughs> okay. He's just describing how that's... someone should lick his ass, and not as like a fetish. He's just saying like. I kiss my ass or something, but in a music, you know, just like he's messing, he's messing <laughs> with people. Right. And maybe like, maybe it's uh, for his critics or something. Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, and Mozart, like in the movie, they show you that he's kind of trying to revolutionize the music of his time. He's telling you, like, why are you guys thinking only making plays for Hercules and I don't know those legends who represent all those high morals? Why don't you make plays about the real problems? He was telling them that stuff for real, like a long uh -huh, time. really? And they were all about like uh, nobility and royalty. And, yeah, in the movie, he tells them who would rather 
listen to Hercules than his hairdresser or whatever, you know, like <laughs> somebody, you know, yeah, exactly. So, and and also they talk about a play that he's working on, like the movie, where like he, he tells you there's a guy who's starting, he's on his knees, so everybody thinks he's praying, but he's not, he's only measuring the space around his bed or whatever. That was humor back then, because <laughs> the theater was so serious. Uh huh. You know, so he was trying to break all that seriousness out of art because. Well, he did know, seem to really have a, f- a sense of humor from some from the some of the music. But oh yeah. <laughs> you can kind of tell a little bit, I guess. Yeah. All right. I guess I have uh, some kind of a dwarf now. Oh man. Yeah. That's a gnome. Or a dwarf. Or yeah. a gnome or a dwarf, I'm not sure. Some someone who is of little stature, but Wow, look but, at his uh... eyes, they're so real. <laughs> it's like he's alive. Wow. Wow, it's just like a photo. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh... I, I really like the, the, the his eyes you can read like the Oh, I just light. I just discovered a trick, you know, like just now. If I copy, if I make a circle around the eye and then paste it and then just move it a little bit, it looks like he's there's a lens. I just need to give it a frame. Are you, do you see what I'm talking about? So, so yeah, this lens around his eye right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's just I. I made a selection and then copied, copied it and, and then pasted it and moved it a little bit. I think you need to give it an edge. Oh yeah, there you go. Need to give it some. That's he's wearing lenses now. He's a learned gnome. Wow. Crazy. We're making discoveries here, left, right, and center. That, that's why we do this. That's why we play, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, know, you just found a very good way to make. Yeah, huh, man. I'm, I'm using. Uh, I'm gonna use this now. From uh, probably need another highlight of some some different angle. Yeah. Do you want yeah, here? I don't know. That's fine stuff. I'm gonna try to see what I That's did. That's fine stuff. Okay, those are not helping. Yeah, maybe. No, that just makes it cartoony. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm okay with this. All right, so how's your going? How's your stuff going? Let me put oh, it. Oh, mine is a bit messy. But... Oh, whoa, I like this. That's great. Oh, man, the mouth. I tried to make the, the I tried to make his nose pop and all that, but I ended up going into details. And uh, I love it. Can you zoom, can you zoom in a bit? Sure, <laughs> but it's still very. Uh, it has I don't know. it has a bit of this uh, Picasso quality of like playfulness, you know, like uh, changing up the the tools, kind of unpredictably and. St- and changing up the uh, the alignment of things so they're out of whack a little bit. It's, I like it. It's super fun looking. Oh, cool! Thank you. Are I you guess. making this face while you draw? Because uh, I that... have a tendency to always make a very big smiling face. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I thought so. It's it's my go-to. Can, uh, can I steal? Can I steal the mouth from you? I want to steal the mouth sure. because it's great. Although this might be, just end up looking a bit creepy because. I tried to feel the nose you made. No, I mean, not Great. exactly. I mean, the, the, a similar one, as you can. Oh, well, that's see. that's funny because I I took that nose from your sketch that I oh. saw like. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you saw my first nose. Yeah, I saw your first. Uh, yeah, like the one that's just the nose. I, I saw just the thumbnail, and all I saw was like it's like eighty percent nose. I was like, I want that. I mean, and I saw the whiteness on the nose and the difference between the value of the nose and the eyes, and I was like, wow, why can't I do that? <laughs> yeah, it's super. Yeah, give me some. Oh man, yeah, I, I knew it. It's, it, it. I thought it might turn out to be something like this. <laughs> oh, okay. Man, it looks, it looks like um, this character I've been working on. For a long time, the, the goblin guy. For a DND campaign or something? Yeah, kinda. I mean, it's 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 this. 
I've told you about this, right? Like, I've been working a long time, over a long time now, on this universe that's about magic and all that. The one with the portals? The, hmm? the one with the portals from different worlds? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah? That, that works. Yeah, that, exactly, it's the one with the portals. And Grimm's of Bomb is one of those main characters that I... Basically, he's kind of like the... The... Ma the, the you know, in, in anime, there's always the hero and there's always that someone he looks up to that he's like a mentor senpai or the old a this mis kinda, yeah. mysterious old man you mean like yeah or or like it could be like a senpai or even an, an actual like high master like like high level master right anyway so grims with bombs in my story is kind of like the high level master is it the one that's like the cat from dragon ball or uh, that's Corin. Uh, Master Corin, uh huh. Is uh, is birthed by him or a different one? Is he is he like him? You mean? Yeah, it's your character. As you are talking, you can you are telling me about a yeah. character of yourself inspired by. Oh yeah, he, yeah he is. I mean, I, I keep coming up with things that he might master or know or storylines for him. But basically, uh, his his overall story is that he is uh, uh, he's like a hermit living uh, somewhere where like he's beyond the law or anything. He's just living in a shack somewhere in some kind of um, tundra, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, he, uh, uh, his, and he's like an engineer. Uh, he he really knows about technology and weaponry. He has like a boomstick and all that stuff. And in in the story, it's just an adventure that stumbles on my this. He just like saves. He has to save the hero, the main character of the story, at some point, out of a very basic uh, problem. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, and yeah, he is gonna have to teach him how to make weapons and uh, and like uh, take care of himself in the environment that he's living in which isn't easy it's a, uh, it's a harsh world huh yeah like yeah because like in my initial story the, the initial story was like the main character lives in a world where it's like really stable and all good and it's all happy and fun it's kind of like the you know shrek right yeah like, you've seen like all of them probably right like uh, you know, I think I, at least a few, at least two or three. I don't know how many there are now. Oh, yeah, they stopped at four. Like. Anyway, All right. so uh, the, the second one maybe they go to the far, far away. They actually go to the place where she comes, uh, like where Fiona comes from. Uh huh. And it's all like really beautiful. <laughs> uh, uh, European style. Uh, city with medieval is that where like lord farquaad is from like he's ruling or something yeah lord farquaad is guy yeah like, i mean it's <laughs> by the way the name of that guy of lord farquaad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so uh, but uh, I, I mean the the far far away when they made that episode they make they kind of made it like kind of like california or whatever in the medieval oh yeah people are like skateboarding and things or yeah. something like that anyway but, but still, they maintained the medieval aspect of it, and they even had a SWAT team. Oh yeah, the SWAT team with the pepper grinder thing was yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. That, really fun stuff that's like one of the few things I remember about that movie. One was the hair from the prince, and then there's that pepper spray, pepper grinder. Yeah, there's uh, there's so many uh, small jokes in the scenes if you think yeah. about it. Like Pinocchio, turns out he's wearing a g-string when he tries to. Use his strings or whatever. Anyway, so many fun stuff. <laughs> I had. Or, or, or like uh, Snow White, she kind of like goes into this death metal trance to like summon the animals, to, you know, the squirrel and the <laughs> cute animals to attack people. <laughs> That's so funny. Anyway, it's like uh, a fuzzy uh, a squirrel mancer or something. Yeah, kind of like that. Oh, uh, funny. Yeah, there's some good gags in there. Very good gags. Yeah. So that whole universe of uh, you know this uh, this is the the initial idea of how 
what what it looks like where my hero, the, the main character, was alive, was living before his expansion began. Wait, he was living in the same place? In that no, not the same place, but I'm just telling you that the place that Oh, like a similar like vibe kind of place, similar yeah. Theme, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a city, everybody's uh, so like domestic as a human, I guess. It's so like uh, just they're just good for functioning in that environment. They're not very good if you throw them in a random environment. They're not gonna survive most probably those kind of people. Anyway, so so he comes so to domesticated. Him. Yeah, domesticated. He's kind of a domesticated human who who uh, at some point has to leave this this uh, this place and and in his universe. When you're in an unstable place, you have like all those unstable portals that open and all that. And there is a concentration of those portals. There's a place, there's like a realm or a world where they can all go to. And it's always popping with portals. It's kind of like a hot zone. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, he, so that goblin lives there. He lives in that place where they have like rifts. Random stuff happening out of nowhere. Uh, and all that, and and the hero has to go in that world. And the goblin is basically the one who's gonna help him survive. Oh yeah, okay, interesting. Create the uh, portal world. He would be like the uh, the Ganon of of like it's too it's dangerous to go alone. Take this type yeah, guy yeah. for the hero. Yeah. All right. Cool. I remember the first gag I did. Was uh, he? He kind of saves him from from like a big ogre that's trying to eat him and all that. Yeah. And and then uh, he 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 tells him like to to find a way not to let it happen to him again and all that. And the solution was that he he creates a, a potion of laxative. <laughs> laxative potion. Oh. So that if he gets eaten. <laughs> oh, if he gets pooped out. I think I've heard that one before. I love that. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm like a broken record, actually. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not, not. It wasn't from you. I, I think I saw that in Warcraft. Oh. The similar thing where somebody got eaten by a golem, and then you have to oh, save yeah. him by giving the golem a laxative, so he gets pooped out. Yeah. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so that's my. That's type of like. It's, I'm imagining always this kind of funny stuff. But always, I try to make it look like also life is fucking hard, even though I'm talking about funny stuff. Uh, that's how I feel. That's how I tell stories. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. It's like uh, either you laugh or cry type of situation. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that, yeah. Yeah. I guess I got that from uh, anime and manga. They do that a lot there, like that. Either. Um, depending also on the theme of the show, but they do that when it's like uh, you have this vibe of uh, prosperity, and then you have all kinds of crazy shit happening later. Where it's uh, really rough and incomprehensible. Hmm. Yeah, throw, throwing things into a different perspective. Yeah, I think I'm done with this this one. I mean, it's been a while, right? This is this is like really good. Like right now, if you wanna add, if you add the colors, uh, it will be done, right? I mean, um, oh, yeah, as a loose sketch, it's, you can tell what it's supposed to be, I guess. Um, so it's it serves it serves its purpose. Nice, man. Yeah, let me check out on check out on you. Oh, I'm starting a new one. Oh yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, uh, what did what did I do with the previous one? Actually? Maybe I, maybe I'll do an opposite approach this time. I'll do like a all white background, and I'll do dark oh, yeah. stuff on it. Oh yeah, you just reminded me something I wanted to try was oh inverting uh, the stuff. Inverting it after I finish. So mm -hmm. I, I don't have an easy I inversion. Like I, a few things. Hmm. I don't have a oh man, I have some scary stuff here for you if you want to look. <laughs> this is like when you're walking in the dark and you see something. Oh god, yeah. It's that face. 
you're like you'll die of a heart attack. It's like it's okay. I wasn't planning to sleep tonight, anyways. <laughs> All right. So here's my guy inverted. Mm -hmm. And what if you like completely inverted him in terms of like uh, uh, black became white? This I could. I can try. I don't know if this program even has that function. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, it's well, it's really. I can do it for you if I print screen it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It's probably easier that way. I if I have to do it, I just have to go to Krita. Um, that's that's my go-to thing for filters and stuff. Cause this this art rich doesn't really do much filtering, mm. and Krita is free. Has a bunch of filters. So. Okay, I took uh, the print screen, and there we go. Oop. Maybe it'll be like a. Is that what happened? Ah. Boom. So. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, it's like he went to the doctor and took an x ray yeah, of his uh, skull. Yeah, x ray. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. Do goblins, you know, do, do fantasy creatures go to the doctor like that? I mean, is this possible? Who knows? If they open a polter of radioactive energy, they can start using the technology. Mm. <laughs> that was a very technical uh, fantasy terminology, as if like there is a science to it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Alright, yeah. let's see something it's else. It's cool to look at them after you invert, because also you can notice how much dark you're doing things, like if you're putting too much... Uh, black sometimes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's it's like a different kind of turning around, like right. One is turning around the the painting's angle. One is turning around these values. They all kind of yeah. jiggles your brain a little bit, so you can maybe see something different. Mm. Ah, I see a Powerpuff Girl. Oh yeah, the, those are the eyes here. Maybe. Uh huh. And this is the maybe. mouth. Maybe. Uh, that's bubbles. That's yes, totally bubbles. You, 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 you're right. Let's see. I miss Mojo Jojo. Oh yeah, Mojo Jojo is great. I like. Uh, also, I'm a fan of Raja Jaja. He's he's cool. Which which one is that one? Uh he the, the, Mojo Jojo has an Indian cousin who is Raja Jaja. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. He's basically like Mojo Jojo, but a bit Indian. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they do so much. so funny so much they're so funny in, in those shows I don't know what happened to Cartoon Network I don't know I don't know if they're still as funny as they used to be but they uh, had so much good stuff they had uh, Johnny Bravo I love Johnny Bravo so funny yeah they had some stuff that's clearly not for kids <laughs> <laughs> I don't know man but like what's the problem with like uh, no no I I don't mean that as a bad thing I mean they there's some really kind of clever things about life yes. and self uh, I don't know self-awareness and things like that that I'm looking at like are kids getting this uh, do they know what they're looking at I used to think it's a good thing to do that because kids are not gonna get it grown-ups are gonna get it and it's a good thing to make the grown-ups enjoy doing activities with their children you know, they will be able to watch that um, cartoon and uh, enjoy it on a different level. That is true. Yeah. That is a good point. Yeah. And they do that in in movies. They, in the movies, uh, you, an example is Shrek. Shrek is a very good example of, like, a kid can watch Shrek and a grown up can watch Shrek. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know. A good, a good cartoon is never so only for kids. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and, and I've been... Uh, watching uh, and sometimes now it's, they're kind of doing it in the wrong way like uh, it, it could be done wrong all that stuff what i'm saying but mm -hmm. uh, like uh, i don't know like they could uh, i don't know show you uh, some kind of things that can actually the the kids might pick up and it doesn't actually um, uh, represent or it doesn't it's not a good example to show the kids and it can happen uh, of course, but uh, but there's also this aspect of letting some grown-up jokes in the mix is not is not entirely like uh, bad. I think. Yeah. 
I guess it depends on your definition of grown up, right? Because, uh, yeah, right. like, typically, people think when you when when you put an adult label on uh, something, that just tells you that there's gonna be a lot of murdering and sex in it, and swearing, right? right. Usually, when you put adult on a media label, but that's like think about that for a minute. That's this is this how you define adulthood. It's the worst aspects of human nature. <laughs> Is he, when you have these, you're an adult. I mean, like, what's who would want to be an adult then? Yeah, this is like an adult is someone who is able to see uh, the most uh, unadult thing to do. Yeah. In a movie, basically. So That's... I I actually think you know the most adult thing I I, I remember seeing is in like a Ghibli, uh, Ghibli movie, like. Uh, you know, like Spirited Away, uh, no, not Spirit. what's the other one? Um, like Princess Mononoke? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it's the one where she travels on the big... Uh, uh, I, 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 know the, I know the movie, I know the, the Japanese... Uh, I know the company, but I don't know that movie specifically. I don't know if I watched it a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, well, Princess Mononoke is the one where there's a girl who's raised by wolves, like wolf gods. Oh. And she's oh, fighting yeah. against these people who are kind of uh, burning down the forest to make iron. Oh yeah, and there's the beautiful moose. That yeah, this god moose. And, and there's this guy who is a prince who got cursed and he's kind of trying to solve his curse because he will die from it. Oh yeah, that's really he, He's like the most adult character I've ever seen in a movie because he sees that there's these two sides are fighting one side is these women who are kind of exploited so they're trying to make a industry for themselves so they can defend themselves mm. and then in the process they're burning down this forest so he can't he doesn't blame them for doing that because he knows that they're they're trying to protect themselves and then these forest creatures are attacking the, the women and they're being really angry and you know bloodthirsty but he, he doesn't hate them either because he understands them. Like they're just trying to protect their home and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there's this third party, which is like kind of the government who's trying to, I don't know, take control of this iron forge and maybe kill the forest god and stuff. And he doesn't hate them either. He thinks that they're just trying to, they don't understand what these things are, these gods and stuff, and they're just afraid. So they're acting out of fear, like, you know, like a cornered animal. So he's going around like literally he's trying to help everybody. He's trying to help the forest people, he's trying to help these women in the Iron Forge town, he's trying to help the government guy, he's and he doesn't ever think anyone's evil. He just thinks that they're all being a bit foolish, but there's no reason to like hate them. For me, that's that's adult. That's being an adult. <laughs> Not that's, it's true. Yeah. So true, that's true. That is actually what's because you know, when you meet someone and you feel like they're still polarized, they're still, I don't know, believing in, I don't know, I, I find, I don't know, this is me personally, but I find it so weird when someone tells me that they believe in world peace, I don't know, or like something like so polarized, like pure happiness or like pure, uh, not happiness, like, like uh, when, when they, like whenever they, they judge something as pure evil, you know, like, Right. Like yes. This guy you're telling, he, he never sees someone as evil. He always understands the background story of the, of the people. He always understands where they're coming from. Uh, and yeah, that's that's that's, that's that's very that's difficult to do for, for yeah. if you're not an adult. You know. If you're not an adult, uh, usually people who, who don't do that stuff, they have always uh, some kind of uh, definition of like, uh, if this is done this way, uh, or or like. Or they have this predisposition in their head where they think that some things are born evil. They don't actually understand that there's no like evil intention. It's more like a, a misunderstanding plus a conflict of interest. Right? Bad, bad choices, I think. Yeah. Uh, unwise choices, yeah. Like bad circumstance yeah, like, plus bad choices equals what, you know, what we would call, people would call evil. Kind of, yeah, something like that. Like, it, like it's not like what they show you in Lord of the Rings. Like you have a yeah, a you have a thing that's just evil by nature and nothing to do about it. Yeah, yeah I don't believe that either. Like that. <laughs> you know, Sauron makes orcs out of mud. I don't know what they're doing. 
Yeah, it's it's a kind of I guess it's kind of it makes the world a little bit. It's an attempt to make sense of why there are so many things not that's not kind of right about the about the world. Yeah, but it's not a. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it's trying to make sense of the world in a way. I I, I suppose. That's my intuition, anyway. Yeah, you mean in the when they they make it. Uh... When they make this axis between good and evil, they yeah, I mean, when so, somebody yeah. de just declares this is evil or these people are just bad and we don't need to feel bad about them or something, it's kind of like an attempt to make a bit of put a bit of sense into this really complex world. Yeah, I think it comes from uh, from my experience. What I notice to people that think like this, they it comes from uh, the the. They have a bad ego, so they think uh, they have a bad relationship with the, their past, those people. So they, they, they feel like uh, uh, they owe it to somebody to act like this. Yeah, uh, you think so, huh? Uh, I feel like they, I feel like the, all this hatred that they're exhibiting towards even, it's coming towards something that they love so much and they don't know how to love. So they kind of, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe too complex, uh, but but it's how do I say it? It's kind of like it's kind of like the uh, like people who are patriotic. They might go kill people in another country or something. Uh, they might like decide that we should go to war just because they love their country, uh, even though they the people that will that, that they will go fight they will be the people that think exactly like them they will be the people that have the same patriotic feeling but it's in another geography you know uh, it's uh, mm -hmm. kind of like uh, yeah. that's probably true i mean people are not so different really yeah no it's not that they're not so different it's like the people who are fighting each other are the people that are always very similar. The people who are judging each other, each other are the people that, who have uh, uh, judged themselves this way. Oh yeah, I'll take it. Now I, now I get what you're saying. Yeah, 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 that's that's exactly right. That's why I'm so careful not to judge people because that you have a judgmental mind, then you, you end up using it on yourself because you can't help it. You, you live in that mind. <laughs> Usually when I... Like see someone who's acting in a way where every part of my being is judging him on the inside, and I'm like, why? What's why that? are you doing this? I, 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 at the end of the day, I tell myself, why am I feeling the need to do it? And then I go back into my mind. It's because I acted like this, like this at some point, and I, feel, I felt. You're, you're exactly pain. right. You, you see, you, you don't like them because you see them doing something that you know you're capable of, or you know you have done, and you don't like what you. And you like what it took e me, exactly right? yeah, yeah. And, and that's and why should i come to the conclusion that after i think that those people did what i did uh, in the past really badly uh, is bad for them it, 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 it might not be bad for them they might be uh, the chosen ones in that department it might be what they need to be doing all the time like it's if people are different why should i think that you know it's so weird and well, yeah there's no good reason to to, yeah. to judge someone really not not really i mean if you can if you, you're doing it for the purpose of learning like you see you see someone doing something bad and you say to yourself i will not do anything like that i, I will use that as an example to to do good things then that's fine that's i don't call that judgment though. i call that discrimination that's the ability to tell what is beneficial for you to do or not mm. and judgment is like an emotional thing is judgment is when you like condemn somebody of yeah yeah. yeah there's there's emotion in that you you don't like that and yeah. uh, when you have emotion you don't have discrimination because you're not thinking anymore you're just reacting <laughs> and dis yeah. discrimination is something you do with your thinking with your mm. you know logical thinking and you can't have both so you, you you gotta cultivate one and not the other or you'll just be kind of reaction reacting all the time reacting you'll be tired yeah you use up all your energy and you end up you know kind of, you put pain in your own mind and what's for no good purpose no good reason really
doesn't help you. Doesn't help them, <laughs> right? Yeah. When was when was the last time somebody was mean to you and judgmental towards you? I made you think about, oh yeah, that person is totally right. I'm gonna change my act. <laughs> I mean, if if a human has the ability to keep doing that all his life, that human is a superhuman. Because <laughs> it's you know. It'll like, be a short and painful life. That, yeah, to actually do that authentically all the time is very. If you can do it, great for you. You know. Exactly no, not stuff. not great. <laughs> very painful. <laughs> if you could do it authentically, like actually learn uh, the, the, the thing, uh, uh, but I mean, if it happens authentically, it would just be with this, even with this negativeness yeah. of it. But I mean, what, authentically, like doing the wrong things? <laughs> no, like, uh, well, I, I'm not sure what I get you yet. Well, so maybe well, try I, a different way of explaining. Yeah, uh, I think you have a point there, I just don't understand yet. <laughs> you, you were saying, you were saying that, uh, that. Can you repeat what you were saying, just so I can make sure I understood you? Uh, um, I mean, I was saying that uh, ju judging judging someone with with emotional reaction is is not helpful for you or the other person. Yeah. It, it doesn't help you improve your behavior. It doesn't help them improve their behavior. So there's oh. no point to it. It, it. it leads to nowhere. It just makes you. It just leads to more pain in your mind because judgment is, you know, is is a painful emotion. It's not pleasant. Oh no, now I get why it, uh, yeah, no, I, I didn't mean to say that uh, being, being judged all the time, I meant like uh, receiving feedback and someone who, can, who has the ability to, to always uh, know uh, how to receive uh, good feedback for, uh -huh. for the right people, is what I mean. Hmm. Yeah, Not yeah. Like judgment. Receiving yeah. feedback. Because, or you mean like uh, kind of reflecting upon your, your own behavior? Yeah. Or Kind of like something like that, and, uh -huh. but throughout other people. Like the person that has the ability to do that the right way throughout other people that are around him. That's what I'm saying. Is oh yeah, absolutely. Someone it's, who has an advantage. It's like really, really important and beneficial to to have good friends. To have friends that have like good qualities. You know, like um, yeah. that they're patient, they're they're understanding, and and things like that. I, I agree. Man. Yeah, I think this one's. I mean, I could go on, but it's it's something. It's not. Uh, it's not bubbles anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's kind of like. It's like the, a the... bumblebee or something. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it's <yeah>. funny. <laughs> you know the, the what's his name? The the guy that does the the terrorist Ahmed. You know the puppet. Oh uh, yeah, the comedian. Uh -huh. yeah. I don't know his name, but I know the Ahmed. You know him, right? Yeah. So, so the he's, he has one of his puppets. Uh, he has so many puppets. He has the Ahmed and the, the, the one old man, and he has one guy who looks kind of like this guy. I mean, this guy looks better than. Him. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. <laughs> Does he have big hands? Uh, yeah, yeah, he has, he barely moves them, but yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh... Alright, he's done. I need to, to, uh, to do some more value games. I feel like I need to improve. Like the way you 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 know how to put the light in the eyes and all that. Mm. That's good stuff. I should I should one day acquire it. One day, uh, hopefully. Oh, you're 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 uh, you're on the way. I mean, you just yeah. I've I've been playing a lot, you know, for probably a lot longer than you. So that's it's only natural. Yeah, I mean, it's I've always had the. The weak point on perspective and a little bit with values. Uh, from the moment I started drawing, those were my uh, things oh. that I didn't enjoy. You know, so they, I became I didn't train them. So uh, you don't know, when don't, you... don't say that. Um, I have a my suggestion is when you when you think about what you're bad at, say something like, 
I'm I, I'm bad at that for the moment. Yeah. Right? Because you're not like a static object. You're a you're a moving process, and if you if you give yourself the impression that you're always the same, then you're less likely to be able to change. Oh yeah. So, you know, if you kind of give yourself the idea and the attitude that you are able to change, like I'm just I'm missing these skills for now, but you know that's only for now. Later it'll be different. Then you're more likely to mm-hmm. to uh, be able to improve. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's, just it's you just have to say this, think the same thoughts, and then add for the moment <laughs> at the end. Yeah, that's true for the moment. Yeah, that's true. It's kind of like that. Uh, I heard like some kind of proverb uh, or something. It's, it's like a story about the guy that always says maybe. Ah, yeah, yeah. I've heard. I've heard that somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. His answer to everything is eh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, when something good happens to him, they go like, "Whoa, whoa, oh, that's great!" The the Ch- oh, it's the, the guy who lost his horse. That's a famous Chinese proverb. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I think okay. he heard it from Alan Watts, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I heard it from oh, Alan Watts. That might be too. That might be too. That might be too yeah. The guy lost his horse one day. He ran away, and all the neighbors came lamenting, saying, "Oh, he's terrible. He lost your horse." He's saying, "Eh, we'll see," or "Ah, eh, maybe." And then a few days later, the horse comes back, and he brought a bunch of wild horses back with with it. And all the neighbors came, and they're like exact ecstatic. They're like, "Oh yeah, that's great. That's super lucky." And then the guy goes, "Eh, maybe." And then a few days later, his son was riding one of these wild horses, and he fell down and broke his leg. Uh, and the neighbors came and they're like, "Oh no, it's terrible. It's bad." He's like, "Eh, maybe." <laughs> yeah, it just yeah, goes on true. like that. Yeah, it's true. It it keeps uh, going up and down. And yeah. Then they recruit his. They don't recruit his son because he broke his leg. The military, yeah, the military recruiters. Yeah, you got it. That's the story. It's yeah. a good. It's a great story. <laughs> it is, and uh, you know uh, that is because let's say I felt happy now that this happened, and then something. Uh, like the opposite happens afterwards so now i have to adapt my feelings and my recovery but if i'm like maybe and maybe all the time like always mm-hmm. knowing that the worst can happen as well as the best i'll always have the best uh, approach for the moment yeah yeah totally i i call that not taking anything personally yeah you know like i i because i think the the kind of the root reason why you let you something good happens and you're super happy and then later it goes away and you're super sad is because you're saying that this good thing happened to me it's about me (laughs) i'm happy and that makes it hard to deal oh wait uh mernan's here hello all right we 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 had some communication things oh you are here cool Hi! Oh my God! I had the weirdest day ever. Wait, you're uh, you're are you in the call with me and and uh, also Ed or just me? No, I'm calling you only. Oh, I'm on. I'm I'm on a. I'm I'm on a another call right now. Can I can I finish that up and then? Oh, oh, okay. Don't have a chat. Okay, okay. Sorry, my bad. My bad. <laughs> no, my bad, my bad. I'm almost done. So give me a few minutes. Hey, uh, I didn't realize that so, she she called me on my own uh, account. So it wh- kind of goes out of the channel. Like yeah. This, right. So yeah. what what do you say we we call it a day for today? Since I I think it was we had a good run and yeah, sure. Uh, I'll go do something uh, else. And uh, no, I I'm, I just wanted to explore this the va- the values with you and more value game. Come up with some ideas. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So, we can yeah, do that again. That's all I wanted to do t- today as well, and uh, uh, we can stop here. Uh, and I guess next time uh, uh, will be uh, during this week. I-, I was very busy last week, that's why I could do, do it during the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you prefer during the week, right? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Usually, I'm. Oh. Yeah, maybe weekend is is fine too. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll talk to you by the end of the week then. Uh, All right. For, for next week, uh, so we can make a session. Uh, 
next weekend probably feel free yeah sure awesome so uh, and thank you yeah no problem good, good times <laughs> yeah so i'll see you again uh in a few days yeah sure all right awesome. all right Thanks. later see you